Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. In this video, we are going to talk about the last air battle of the Operation Allied Force, which took place on May the 4th, 1999. The operation commenced on 24th of March, and it was a NATO military campaign against the country which, for certain reasons, called itself Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and it was headed by the infamous Slobodan Milosevic. This wasn't the already defunct Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, which broke apart in the early 1990s after four out of six federal republics declared independence. This remainder was now essentially just Republic of Serbia, with Montenegro as an appendix, so for the rest of the video the country will be called Serbia. There was one more part of it which wanted out, and that was the province of Kosovo, populated mostly by ethnic Albanians. They started an armed rebellion, this eventually led to the NATO intervention, but we won't go into details because it's not the focus of this video. Serbian Air Force was equipped with a respectable number of combat aircraft, but only 16 of them were modern MiG-29s, which could theoretically confront NATO forces. The problem for the Serbs, however, was that their aircraft were not properly maintained, and their pilots flew less than 10 hours per year. This was the result of a weapons embargo and international economic sanctions that the country was facing. About two years before the conflict, the MiG-29s were supposed to be overhauled, but this wasn't done. Lifetime of aircraft components such as avionics was simply extended by a decree, without any servicing or testing. Aircraft were declared functional. When the Operation Allied Force began, Serbian MiG-29 pilots took off trying to score at least one or two air-to-air -air kills. None were successful. In fact, five of them were shut down and one might have been the victim of a friendly surface air missile. Pilots experienced various failures of radars, radar warning receivers and radios. After these initial attempts, the Serbian Air Force tried taking off a few more times, but then generally gave up, realizing that their chances were minuscule. There was, however, a constant pressure from the political leadership that fighter aviation should do more. Some pilots even felt that they were resented because not enough of them had died defending their country. We are now flying with US Air Force pilot Michael Dog Getchy. The date is 4th of May 1999 and Getchy is leading a flight of four Block 50 F-16 CJs on a dual mission. They were supposed to provide protection for NATO strike groups, both from enemy fighters and surface trio missiles. The F-16s were armed each with two MRAMs and two Sidewinders, two Harm anti-radiation missiles and a centerline ECM pod. Their call sign was Puma 1-1, they took off from Aviano Air Base in Italy, and they were tasked with protecting strike groups Alpha and Charlie. Another flight of F-16s was tasked with covering groups Bravo and Delta, and the two F-16 flights would switch duties while the other one was refueling. Strike group Alpha consisted of Dutch, French and British aircraft. Michael Getchy was an experienced pilot, previously flying F-4 Phantoms and graduating from fighter weapons school. He had flown combat missions in Bosnia and Iraq. This was his 115th combat sortie and 7th in the Operation Allied Force. Number 4 in his flight was Nut Peterson. He flew this position even though he was a qualified 4-ship flight leader and his role would prove crucial. This was one of the first NATO daylight strikes against central Serbia. That part of the country was well defended by surface to air systems which had already shut down two NATO aircraft. That's why Getchy was more worried about this threat rather than fighter aircraft. And we are now flying with Serbian MiG-29 pilot Colonel Milenko Pavlovic. He was the commander of 204th Fighter Regiment and a very experienced pilot. As the commander, he wasn't supposed to take off, but he replaced one of his subordinate pilots, literally dragging him out of the cockpit and saying basically, you're not going to die, I'm going to die. The main source about him is a Serbian TV documentary from 2006 called Flight into Death, which I believe is not available with English translation. According to his parents, his wife and sons, he was troubled by the idea of sending his subordinate pilots to suicide missions. So on 4th of May, when Air Force Headquarters issued an order that a MiG-29 should be sent against NATO strike force, he sat in the cockpit of the MiG-29 and took off from Batajnica Air Base towards Valjevo, his hometown.
we're back with Michael Getchy. The weather over the target area was poor. The British and the Dutch strikers aborted their attack completely, while the French group callsign Knife 61 was able to find their targets, but requested additional 8 minutes on station from Getchy's flight. This was eventually prolonged to 12 minutes, and the F-16s were now escorting the strikers out of Serbia with a lower fuel state than planned. Then, one of the AWACS aircraft called the Bogey Airborne. Getchy missed this, but his number 4, Nut Peterson, heard the call and reminded him on the intra-flight frequency, giving him the Bogey position. The F-16 flight turned around and climbed into high 30s. During the turn, AWACS called the contact hostile for the first time. Getchy's wingman then called bingo fuel and Getchy thought the flight would probably have to divert to Sarajevo after the engagement. Getchy and AWACS controller then went through a rather complicated communication in order to meet the rules of engagement. This took some time and MiG-29 was now much closer than Getchy felt comfortable. He even registered its radar hits on his radar warning receiver. Getchy finally launched two Amram missiles at the MiG, which was now pretty close in maneuvering. Getchy needed to roll his plane to observe the target below him. He eventually saw two explosions and made two splash one with a fireball radio calls.
people on the ground observed the air battle. After they witnessed one of the aircraft shut down, they assumed it was a NATO aircraft and they started cheering, almost like in a sports game. After a while, it became obvious that this was in fact a Serbian MiG-29. The pilot, Colonel Pavlovich, was killed. Before he was hit, he was able to communicate with his ground control. To their question, do you see the blue force, his response was, I see them, but they see me too. The last thing heard from him was, they got me. From this, we can interpret that his avionics were functioning. He was able to communicate on the radio, his radar was able to detect enemy aircraft, which is also confirmed by Getch's account of detecting MiG's radar. He was probably also able to detect enemy radars and missiles on his radar warning receiver. He probably couldn't achieve a radar lock, very likely because of F-16's jamming, but he was simply outnumbered and climbing against an enemy on higher altitude. Amram missiles were fired from relatively close range, indicating that they must have had plenty of energy and maneuverability. This was the last time that any of the Serbian fighters took off to confront the NATO force. The surviving MiG-29s were hidden away. Getchi's flight didn't have an easy time returning home from their combat sortie. Their tanker withdrew to a safer location, when they eventually reached it they had to refuel in bad weather with many other airplanes trying to refuel at the same time. Charlie's strike was cancelled due to bad weather and the F-16th flight returned to Aviano and landed in heavy rain. A Serbian TV documentary mentioned before and their Wikipedia article suggest that Pavlovich was shot down by Dutch F-16s, but that doesn't seem to be correct. It was Michael Dog Gecci who scored the last air to air kill of the Operation Allied Force. I hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to press the like button. If you're able to, you can also support the channel on Patreon. Subscribe if you haven't already, and keep watching Showtime 112.